Hiya guys, it's that magical time of year when the elderflowers are in bloom. There's a few things you can do with them. Today, I'm going to show you how we make a gorgeous cordial with elderflower blossoms. Just a word of warning, if you're going to be picking elderflowers, make sure you can identify what the elderflower looks like because there is a plant that grows up from the ground, so an elderflower you will, you will pick those off the branches of a tree but there is a plant that grows up from the ground poisonous hemlock the clue is in the title you really don't want to confuse the two they do look similar if you're not sure what it is you're looking at they do look similar so always make sure you know exactly what an elderflower tree looks like and then that way you're staying safe also if you're picking elderflowers it's a little bit naughty if you strip a tree because then that tree won't be able to produce any elder berries which aren't just a food for us they're also a food for lots of wildlife so when you're out picking don't strip the trees always leave quite a few on each tree move on find another tree we've got a rule when we're foraging it's the dog we height rule so them there, off a very low branch of this elder, if I was a dog, I could easily wee on that, so we, we won't pick them. We'll go above the dog wee height rule, so that one, yes. And rather ironically, elderflower has a slight whiff of cat wee about it. Not dog wee, cat wee, but down there, it would definitely smell a dog wee. Give the elderflower heads a quick rinse just to get off any beasties that might be on them. You don't want to go mad with this bit though because you'll wash away all of the pollen which is one of the things that will give the cordial its colour. I'm not going to give you quantities for this recipe because mainly depends on how many elderflower heads you can find. Try and take off as much of the green stalk as you can and certainly don't have any leaves in there. It'll affect the flavour. You now want to add sugar. I used a full kilogram bag. If you've got more or less elderflower heads than I've got, then obviously you would use more or less sugar. The sugar not only sweetens the cordial, it also acts as a preservative. Another form of preservative that we add to this cordial is sliced lemons. The citric acid in those lemons. And it also, will affect the flavour in a good way but the lemon juice when you mix it with the elderflowers it makes for a really tasty drink the citric acid also gives a bit of an effect a, a tanginess to the cordial now if you don't have lemons you can actually use citric acid powder you want to be looking at about 50 to 100 grams if you're making four or five liters like i am in this recipe Another type of acid you can use is tartaric acid, but I would suggest that citric acid is slightly easier to get hold of. In the pan now, I've got the elderflower heads, the sugar and the lemons. The next thing I want to do is add the water. You can't have a cordial without the liquid. So for this, I used four liters of water. Now obviously, it all depends how many elderflower heads you've got. Some people when they're making this cordial, they will leave that whole mixture to steep overnight. I don't, life's too short. I just boil it all up, all in a wanna. While your cordial mixture is in the pan, get into a, a temperature where it'll start boiling away nicely and that sugar will dissolve. Get all the equipment you're going to be using next sterilized. So you want to be looking at bottles to store it in, a bowl to collect the liquid in, a jug perhaps to pour into the bottles and a funnel. All needs to be really, really clean and sterilized. To strain the mixture, I just use that colander there. Now you can, if you want, to make sure that there's absolutely no petals in it whatsoever, you can strain it through a muslin bag. We don't mind having the odd petal floating around in the cordial. 
we actually think it looks really, really nice. And this colander we're using on top of a bowl to catch the liquid as it drains through, it does allow some of the petals to go through, but it stops like the lemon pips getting through. Ain't nobody got time for lemon pips in your cordial. As much of a fan of composting, everything possible as I am, I don't compost the used bits of lemon and, and flower heads because if you remember we've got two different types of preservative in there they're not really going to compost very well so we just bin them now into your sterilized bottles you can start pouring the cordial don't forget you also need to sterilize the funnel and when you're doing this stage try not to put your fingers inside the bottle and also inside the funnel or inside the lids of the bottles so the four liters of water I added into the pan has given me just under five liters of cordial. It'll keep for three to four weeks in the fridge, or if you freeze it, make sure you leave enough gap for expansion and it'll last for several months in the freezer. If you're going to pick elderflowers yourself, it's always a good idea to get the landowner's permission and try not to pick those that are growing in heavily polluted areas or close by to a main road. Can you rip them in? Cheers. Good? Mm -hmm. You taste the elderflower? It's nice, isn't it? 